so today we are going to discuss the error correction techniques and the error correction is as the name indicates suppose if you are transmitting in the case of the networks you will be say, uh, having a sender and a receiver and the sender will be transmitting some data to the receiver and during this course of transmission in between there are so many ways by which the data can be get corrected okay so in the error correction techniques we are find, trying to find out some way by which we are able to detect this errors and we are able to correct that errors so that the receiver will be receiving the data in the correct manner as the sender is sending the data and the error correction techniques are mainly in two ways one is the backward error correction mechanism or it is also called retransmission mechanism that is uh, if the sender uh, after uh, sending the data and the receiver has detected an error that is the receiver is able to understand that the incoming data has corrupted then the receiver will again retransmit the data back to the sender and the sender again has to send the data once again so that is also the called retransmission or backward error correction and the second method is the forward error correction that is if the receiver detects some error in the incoming frame then it will execute some error correction code or some error correction mechanism that will be able to generate the actual data so that the actual data can be attained by the receiver so this is called the forward error correction mechanism and mainly there are various error correction mechanisms or error correction codes and the widely used error correction codes are hamming code binary convolution code read solomon code low density parity check code and so on and among this different error correction codes today we are going to discuss about the hamming code mechanism and that is a widely accepted error correction technique so this technique that is the hamming code mechanism was introduced by a person called r w hamming hence it is indicated by the name hamming code mechanism okay so uh, with respect to the name of the person this code mechanism has received its name that is the hamming code mechanism and here we are able to determine the position of a bit within the error so suppose if the sender has sent the data and the receiver is receiving the data and the receiver has able to identify that the occurs an error by using this hamming code mechanism we are able to find out at which bit position the error has occurred Okay, so that is the main advantage of using this mechanism and this is only applied or only applicable in the case where there is only a single bit, bit error has occurred. We are not able to find out the error where if multiple bits are repositioned or are corrupted. Only this is applicable in the case if only a single bit has been corrupted during the transmission. And here, along with the data bit, suppose we are going to send some data, and along with this data, we are going to add some additional bits called the redundant bits called R bits. Okay, and suppose if R is the number of redundant bits attached along with the data, and the total number of bits in our actual data is denoted by the letter D, and the number of the redundant bits by this letter R. So, total as a whole, we will be transmitting a data of length D plus r this is the total length of the data that will be transmitted by the center and this data will be received by the receiver and the receiver will be doing some error correction mechanism that is the hamming code mechanism and you'll be able to find out whether an error has occurred and if an error is detected then he is able to do the correction also in the receiver side itself so hence it is called the forward error correction mechanism and as we have discussed, we are appending some additional bits called the redundant bits called the R bits. And for finding the number of bits or how many redundant bits we are going to append, uh, attach along with the data, we are using this equation that is 2 raised to R should be greater than or equal to D plus R plus 1. So by satisfying this equation, we are finding out the number of R bits. Okay. So the this is the algorithm. Okay. So first an information of d bits that is the actual data bits are added to the redundant bits that is the r bits to form the total data of length d plus r bits and the location of each of this d plus r bits are assigned according to the decimal values 
and the r bits will be placed in the positions of 1 2 etc that is the positions of powers of 2 that is 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 like that okay and at the receiving end the parity bits are recalculated and the decimal value of value of this parity bit which we are calculating at the receiver end will be determining the position of the error so it will be more clear to you once we are explaining with the help of an example okay so suppose we are going to send the data 1010 this is the data which is sent by the sender and it is going to be received by a receiver and this is the data that is 1010 so the total number of data bits that is the number of d bits is equal to 4 as you can see there are 4 bits in the data actual data so then d is equal to 4 now by using this equation we are supposed to calculate the number of r bits or how many redundant bits we are going to attach along with this data d so putting this equation 2 raised to r greater than or equal to d plus r plus 1 so I am going to find out the minimum or a lower value of R which will be satisfying this equation. So you can see that the low, smaller value of R which will be satisfying the above equation will be R is equal to 3. So I got the value of R. So now I know that the total number of bits is equal to D plus R. Where D indicates the total actual number of bits of the original data and R indicates the number of redundant bits. So as a whole, I am going to transmit or the sender is going to transmit a total data of length D plus R that is equal to 4 plus 3, so 7 bit size. Okay, and this is going to get transmitted over the communication channel. Now, now we know that the total length we are knowing what is it uh, in that how many are the data bits we know and how many are the redundant bits we know now we want to find out the position of these redundant bits as a whole it is of seven bits and among the seven bit position which are the positions where we are going to append the redundant bits that we are going to find out okay so as we have got the value of r is equal to three i am going to represent these three bits means that there are three bits as redundant bits and four bits are the data bits and i'm going to give the notations of these three redundant bits as r1 r2 and r4 because this redundant bits will be occupying the positions which we are going to represent as the powers of two or i can say like that among the seven bit of total data length and the three redundant bits will be occupying the position of the positions which I can able to express as the powers of 2. Okay, that is 2 raised to 0. Since we are having 3 redundant bits, we are taking the positions as 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 1, and 2 raised to 2. That is 1's place, 2 raised to 1 is 2, that is a 2's place, and 2 raised to 2 is 4, so that is a 4th place. So this is the representation. So as we have discussed already, our total length of the data is 7. That is 4 plus 3, 7. So position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. In that, which are the positions of the redundant bits? That power places which you are going to able to express as powers of 2. That is 2 raised to 0. That is the position number 1. Then 2 raised to 1, position number 2. And 2 raised to 2, that is position number 4. That is why I am going to give the notation. So the representation of the redundant bits is R1, that is position number 1. Then R2, position number 2. And R4, which is the position number 4. Okay. So these are the positions of the redundant bits. The remaining all positions, I am going to add my data as in the sequence. That is 1, 0, 1, 0. So 1, 0, 1, and 0. So this is how the data will be looking after we are appending the redundant bits along with the original data. Now, suppose we are using an event parity mechanism. Okay, now with this event parity mechanism, we are going to find out the values of R1, R2, and R4. Okay, so the next step is determining the parity bits. First, we are going to find out the parity bit, that is the R1 bit, first one. So for finding out the value of this R1 bit, we are using the uh, format that is found by calculating or by performing the parity check on the bit positions whose binary representation includes ones in the first position. That is, as we have seen, we are going to represent 
as in the form of a 7-bit representation. That is, the positions are 1, 2, etc. up to 7. And when you are writing this all positions, that is from 1 to 7, in their corresponding binary representation, which are the positions whose unit place is 1? That positions are going to find out the or used to find the value of the first redundant bit. So you can see that when I'm going to represent all these values in their corresponding binary, this 1, 3, 5, and 7 are the values whose binary representations will be having the unit place as one value. You can see that is this is 1, this is 3, the unit place is 1. When I'm going to represent 5 in this binary value, the unit place is 1, and 7 also the unit place is 1. So for finding out the value of the first redundant bit, which are the positions involved, the positions will be 1, 3, 5, and 7. Okay, so I'm going to find uh, take out the values on, on that corresponding position. So 1 is R1, 3, 0, then 5, 1, and 7, 1. So take out this value. So 1, 1, then 3, 0, and R1. So I'm using the even parity mechanism. As we can see in the above figure, we are taking only the positions where the binary representation, the unit place is 1. And we can find out that those positions are 1, 3, 5, and 7. Now, and I'm, since I am using an event parity mechanism, the total number of 1s I am counting. So here, the total number of 1s on considering these four places is an even number. Therefore, I will be find, taking the value of R1 as 0 since we are using an even parity mechanism so after considering the total number of ones i have got the value of total number of ones is an even number so i am going to set the value of r one as zero so i got the value of the first parity bit similarly i am going to find out the value of r2 and r4 so for finding out the value of r2 bits here same way we will be considering the uh, binary representation of these positions from 1 to 7 and here for finding out the value of r2 i will be considering those positions whose binary representation the second place that is the tenth place is 1 will be considered so those will be 2 3 6 and 7 then the same procedure i will be taking out the values and i will be counting the total number of ones and here also i got the total number of ones as an odd number you can see this is one then six this is zero then next is zero and r2 so after counting the total number of ones here i am getting only a single one so that is an odd number so what will be the value of r2 it will be set as one so i got the value of r1 r sorry r2 as one since we are using even parity mechanism. Similarly, I'm going to find out the value of R4. So for finding out the value of R4, I will be considering those positions whose binary representation, the third place, that is the hundreds place, is one. So those numbers are four, five, six, and seven. Again, I'm using the even parity mechanism and I will be counting the total number of ones. Here, the total number of ones is an even number. So I will be setting the value of R4 as zero. Now I got the value of all the parity bits. Now I can represent this, the data, that is the data that is to be transferred will be one zero, one double zero, and one zero. So this is the data that is has that has been transmitted by the sender. And this has to be received by the receiver. Suppose, if the same data has been received by the receiver, then I can say that there is no error occurred and the receiver will be able to find out whether an error has occurred. And if the same data has been received, then there will be no error at the receiver end. Then suppose this is the actual data that the sender has been sent. This is a sender sending data. And suppose if the receiver during the transmission, some corruption has occurred, and the receiver has received the data in this format. You can see that the data which has been sent is 10, 100, and 10. But the receiver received in this way, that is 10, 11, 010. So at the receiver side, as we have discussed, the uh, error correction mechanism will be running. That is the Hamming court mechanism will be running. And the same process, what we have done by the sender, will be done by the receiver. So the receiver has known that the sender has sent a 7-bit data. So in this 7-bit data, there are three parity bits and four letter bits. 
so the receiver is going to find out what are the values of the parity bits and he knows that the sender has used an event parity mechanism okay so the receiver is going to find out the values of r1 r2 and r4 so for finding out the value of r1 which are the bit positions involved 1 3 5 and 7 so take out the values of this position 1 3 5 and 7 and event parity mechanism has been used so total number of 1 is after counting you can see 1 2 2 ones are there 2 is an event number so the receiver came to know that the value of r1 is equal to 0 since they are using event parity mechanism he has set the value of r1 as 0 similarly for finding out the value of r2 we will be considering the position 2 3 6 and 7 so 2 3 6 and 7 and count the total number of ones 1 2 so the total number of 1 is 2 so that is an even number so what would be the value of r2 r2 will be 0 since we are using event parity mechanism. Similarly for R4, so for R4, we will be considering the positions 4, 5, 6, and 7. So 4, 5, 6, and 7. So count the total number of ones, 1, 2, 3. 3 is an odd number, so the value of R4 will be set as 1. Since we got the total number of ones as an odd number, sorry, odd number. Okay, so then the receiver will be arranged in the order r4 r2 and r1 so r4 since the total number of ones is an odd number we have set it as one then r2 we got thus an even number so zero and r1 we got it as an even number so when setting it as zero so that is one zero zero so which means that while doing the reverse mechanism at the receiver side if the receiver is getting this value of the binary representation of the redundant bits as 0 0 0 means that there is no error occurred and the data has been uh, successfully received but here on arranging you can see that this is not 0 but here what is the corresponding decimal value of this one this is 7 which means that there occurs some corruption during transmission and at which position bit position the corruption has occurred at position number seven at the position numbers sorry uh, it is not seven that is one zero zero that is binary value is equal to four okay so at position number four there occurs an error that position has been corrupted during transmission that is the meaning of this one so after at the receiver side the receiver will be doing the error having got mechanism uh, then he will be finding out the value of this redundant bit and if he gets the value as zero which means that there is no error occurred but if the binary representation of the redundant bits give you some corresponding value other than zero then that will be indicating the corresponding bit position where the error has occurred so here you can see one double zero where it represents the decimal value four which means that the error has occurred at the fourth bit position so the receiver can himself do the corruption uh, correction so that the fourth bit position what is the data that the receiver has received the opposite will be the correct value so you can see that so this is the actual data this is our fourth bit position so in the actual data the sender has sent zero on the fourth bit position but while the receiver has received the data at the fourth bit position it has received as one so there occurs an error so the receiver will be doing the uh, opposite cor error correction mechanism so he find that at this bit position four an error has occurred so the data that he has received is a corrupted data so the opposite value since we are using binary representation um, the opposite value so if he has received a one then zero is the actual data he will be able to identify and he will be doing the correction there itself there is no need of retransmitting it again and do the correction again okay so this is how uh, the Hamming code mechanism will be working. So Hamming code mechanism will be a forward error correction mechanism where it will be appending some redundant bits along with the data which will be transmitted over the transmission media and the receiver after receiving will be finding out the value of the redundant bits and if he gets the value of the redundant bits as zero then means that there is no error occurred. Otherwise it will be giving the corresponding bit position where the error has occurred.
and the opposite value what he has received the opposite value will be the correct data and the error correction can be done at the receiver's end itself so this is called the hamming cord mechanism and hope you got the concept clear thank you